Hi everybody, Mrs. Bodishan here. Let's talk about electron configuration. So let's start with a brief review over an atom and mostly we're talking about the electrons in this case for electron configuration. So in this model here, you can see the electrons are the gray dots that are circulating our nucleus. Um, these are gonna be very, very tiny mass. So small, in fact, we consider it zero when we do any math um, that's involved with atoms and they go incredibly fast. Okay, so they are high speed and they're gonna stay in that electron cloud. They are not gonna go into the nucleus at all. Now, new information um, from the last video that you watched over atom and ions. If you haven't watched that one, go back and check it out. Um, but now we're talking that we have different orbitals that these electrons are gonna be in and even suborbitals that they're in as well. And it's all based upon how many electrons you have in your atom to which orbitals they are gonna be found in. So let's take a look at this. <clears throat> Here's the periodic table. It is color coded for you um, into the blocks of the periodic table. So we have the S block over here. Notice that this block is helium and helium is over here on the periodic table, but it is purple because it is in the S block as well. Okay, so it's kind of out of place and I just wanted to point that out to you. Then we have our P block over here in green. The D block is gonna be yellow section. And then we have the F block, which is the blue at the bottom. Um, I'm not gonna go too far in depth over the F block, just barely brush over that for this particular video, okay? So um, this is them again, but I wanted you to be able to see that these numbers um, are going to start really mattering, okay? So the ones that are going down, one, two, three, four, these are our period numbers, which is just the row that they're gonna be in. Um, and it, it lets you know where the electrons can be found, okay? Um, these numbers up top, this one, two, notice it starts over because this is the D section now. So this is the, the S block and the S block can only hold two electrons. So this is a placeholder for the first electron, this is a placeholder for the second electron, and then every time we get to a new block, the numbers will start over. So notice the D block can hold 10 electrons, and the P block can hold six electrons, and our F block down here can hold 14 electrons. Now, do they look different from one another? Absolutely, they sure do. So um, our S orbital is kind of just like a sphere, okay? The P orbital, you can see it's kind of like the infinity sign a little bit. Um, the D orbitals do start to get a little bit more crazy, like we're overlapping um, some P orbitals almost. And then the F orbitals are even more complex and they do come in a variety of shapes as well. I did put over here a note for you about how many electrons can be found in each one of these orbitals. It's gonna be very important. So one more time, S can hold two electrons, P can hold six electrons, the D block can hold 10 electrons, and the F block can hold 14 electrons. And this, remember, is going to be our quantum model or the current or modern atomic model, okay? All right. So now we need to understand what it is we're writing when we write down the electron configuration. You're gonna to have to write it in a particular way. It's super easy, let's check it out. This is an example, 1s1. This big one up in front does represent your energy level. In other words, what period are you in in the periodic table, right? or the row. Um, now, if you've seen the periodic table, it goes one through seven. So you're only gonna have a number one through seven right here, and it is gonna be a full size number. Now, the letter that comes after this is the type of orbital that you have, and we only have four types. We have the S, P, D, and F. So one of those are gonna be there. And then the small superscript number um, that you're gonna write after your orbital is gonna be the number of electrons that you have in that particular orbital. So if I was writing this one, this 1s1, this would actually just be for hydrogen, okay? So it's in the first period, it's in the s block, and hydrogen only has one electron. So that's how we would write hydrogen. We're gonna do a couple of these as an example. But before we even get there, I want you to look at this and see what you notice about each row and each block. If we're, if we're gonna write our electron configuration, we need to do it as if we're reading a book. So we're gonna start at the top and we're going to go left to right, just like you're reading and down a line every time, just as if you're reading a book, okay? So if I am going to start here 
This is 1s1. Then we go to 1s2. Next line down, 2s1. So this is the second row. And then this is still the s block, and this is one electron. We're still in the second row, still in the s block, but now we have two electrons. And we're gonna skip all the way over, okay? So we're not gonna go down, we're gonna go as if we're reading, we're gonna go all the way over on the same line, and we're still in the second row, but now this is the p block, and we have one electron. And we can continue two, three, four, five, six electrons to the next row, which now is the third row, s block, one, and then three S two, skip all the way over. And again, now we're in the P block. So you're gonna continue to do this and you're gonna see where you're gonna land and you're going to stop there for your endpoint. But there's endpoints along the way and I've outlined them here. Every time you leave a block, you have to write down the electron configuration of that block. And then when you reach the next endpoint, you're gonna write that electron configuration down. And I know this sounds confusing right now, but if you look, if I'm going through the S's, this is where I leave. Well, this one is where I leave um, uh, the S block first right here. So that's an endpoint if that's all you have. Here is another endpoint for the S's and all the way down. If I'm leaving my P blocks, all of these are gonna be the endpoint for my P blocks. And if I'm leaving my D blocks, all of these are the endpoints of my D blocks. Okay, so I'll be writing these down. And again, let's just do some so we can get the fill for it, right? So what is the electron configuration of helium? First thing we need to do is we need to look for where is helium? Helium is right here. So we would go through this and we would say, okay, 1s1, 1s2. So this is gonna be where I stop. I stop at the atom I'm looking for. I'm looking for helium, I need to stop here, and I'm going to write that down, 1s2. So that is all I'm writing down for helium. Helium's really simple, okay? Let's try another one. Like You're gonna need to write down a little bit more. So let's look at carbon. First thing we need to do is find carbon. Carbon is right here. All right, once you locate that, start at the beginning of the periodic table and write it down as you go. So we start here, okay, sure, 1s1, 1s2. So I need to write this one down because this is an endpoint, okay? So I would write 1s2, and I'm just gonna put it up here so you guys can see it, so 1s2. But I now need to continue. Now I'm in the 2s, and I'm going farther than 2, but this is an endpoint, I'm gonna leave the S's, so I need to write that one down. So 2S2. I'm gonna skip ahead and I'm gonna go all the way to the P block, but I need to stop at carbon. So this is 2P1 and this is 2P2. So I need to write down 2P2. And I know if I'm stopping at 2P2, I'm carbon, right? Okay, so there are elements right here in this blue section, and those are your transition metals. That's also your D block, right? They're actually an energy level lower than the S and P block. Because of this, we need to um, take away one whenever we're writing our electron configuration because they are one energy level down. So what do I mean by this? I mean, if this is um, period one, um, period two, period three, period four, this block right here, this top row of the D block should be four, right? You're one, two, three, four down. However, we're gonna count this one as three, so minus one, okay? So when we enter the D block, we're minusing one, so this is three. And um, this really should be five, but we're gonna minus one and say it's four. So you see what I'm saying? We're gonna try one, okay? What is the electron configuration for cobalt? We're gonna find cobalt, Cobalt is right here, it is in the D block, and we're gonna start at the beginning of the periodic table and write down what we need to. I'm gonna post it so you can see because this is a long one. So we start at the beginning, just like we're reading a book. 1s2, we write it down, that's our endpoint. Come down to the second row, 2s2, that's our endpoint. Go ahead and write it down. We're skipping ahead, 2p6, all right, go ahead and write it down. 3s2, all right, we can write that down. 3p6, go ahead and write that down. Now we're going 4s2, and we're gonna write that down. Now we're entering the D block. Now remember, 
This is not going to continue to be 4D. Instead, we minus 1. So it's 3D. But I don't want 10, right? Because cobalt is right here. So I don't write 3D 10. I need to write 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. It's 7 over. Therefore, it's 3D 7. And that will um, let us know, hey, it's cobalt. So we write 3D7, and this entire thing here is your electron configuration for cobalt. Okay, electron configuration for bromine. We locate bromine, it is right here. Start at the top, 1S2, write it. 2S2, write it. 2P6, go ahead and write it. Two, I'm sorry, 3S2, go ahead and write it. 3P6, and we write that one there. 4s2, and we write that one here, and now we're going backwards, one, right, for the D block. So 3d10, all of them. And we're gonna enter back into the P block. But remember, the P block is normal. It is not one, um, one down energy level. It's a normal energy level like the S block. So we are entering back into the fours, okay? See, one, two, three, four. So we're entering back into the fours. So 4P, and we're not going all the way to six. We're stopping right here at bromine, which is gonna be five. See, one, two, three, four, five. So 4P5. And I know this looks weird because we just went four, three, four, but that is correct, okay? That's exactly what it's supposed to look like. The D block being one minus what is around it because of its energy level. Okay, shortcut time. Everybody loves a shortcut. Those can get so lengthy, so we have the noble gas notation, which is just an abbreviated way to do these electron configurations, and it will save you a bunch of time. So let's go ahead and look at this. Um, instead of starting with hydrogen every single time and reading it like a book like we've been doing, instead we're going to start to the closest noble gas that is before the element in question, the one that you're looking at. Remember, um, all the noble gases are right here down the down the line of the periodic table, okay? So let's try one and you can see what I'm saying. So what is the noble gas electron configuration for carbon? First, we look for carbon. It is right here. Now I need to look at my noble gases, which are over here on the end, and I need to look for the one that comes before carbon, okay? So I'm not looking for neon. Neon occurs after carbon. See, carbon is six. Neon is 10, so that's after carbon. I needed to go before or one row up, okay? So helium is gonna be the one that I'm gonna start with. And in order to do this correctly, we have to put the, uh, helium, the symbol, in brackets. So we put it in brackets, and this lets you know, hey, we're starting here. We're not starting at the beginning, we're gonna start here instead. So we're starting at helium, and then we would end up going just like normal from there, reading a book, so you start at the um, at the far left side, just like reading a book, and you go from there. So this is the second row, so 2s2, right here. And then we go all the way over, and then 2p, how many are we going over? One and two, so 2p2. Two. And that lets us know that it is carbon. And this is a much reduced way to do this, and it is a really nice shortcut. Let's do another one, silicon. First locate silicon, it is right here. If you wanna try this one on your own, pause this video and see if you can get it right. Okay, so let's go ahead and look. So um, if I'm looking for the noble gas to start with, I am not looking at argon. Argon occurs after silicon. I need to go up one. So I will be starting with neon in this case, okay? So put your neon in brackets. Don't forget those brackets, it's very important. And then you're gonna start here, okay? Which means, we just wrote the neon in the brackets, so we're going down to the third row. So it's 3s2, and we can write that. And then we're going over, and we're still in the third row, 3p, how many did we go over? We went over one, two, so 3p2. What is the noble gas configuration for 10? Well, go ahead and find 10, it is way down here. This one, you guys, if you weren't using noble gas configuration, would be really long, so this is a very helpful um, shortcut to use. Go ahead and pause it and try this one. Okay, let's let's go ahead and look at this. So we are going to be using krypton. Notice it is before 10. So go ahead and put that krypton in the brackets and we're going to start from here. So if you need to count down, that's 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is right here where we are. So 5s2, go ahead and write it. 
Um, and then we are going over to our D block, but remember D block is one, one down, okay? So it's not 5D, it's gonna be 4D. And we're going all the way across, so 4D, 10. And then we're gonna enter back into the P block. So we need to go back up to where we were because it's really at five still, okay? So 5D, and how many are we over? We're over one, two. So 5P2 is what you're gonna end up with there. What is the noble gas configuration, uh, electron configuration for helium? Well, helium is right here. So is there a noble gas that comes before helium? No. Helium is the first noble gas. There is none before it to use to make it any shorter. So the electron configuration is the same for the abridged version or for the regular version of the electron configuration for helium. It's just 1s2, see? You're in the first row, the S block, and you have two electrons, you went over two. So 1s2 would be for helium. That's kind of a trick question and I wanted to throw that one in there to see if you guys would catch it. So I hope this was helpful, you guys. Go ahead and subscribe to my channel to see more videos coming your way. Thanks, everybody. Bye.